Hey tribe, welcome back to my channel, Kinnam Mapalomaku, and happy 2023, right? I feel like I haven't done this in a, in a while. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, towards the end of every year, people just are so exhausted, are tired. Pam knows, she was saying, let's, I said, Pam, I have nothing. I have nothing. And I took off and I went on holiday and that's what I've been doing. But we're back and we're very excited. We are very hopeful about the new year we are very looking forward to the new year and i think that's what a new year brings you know just a shift in perspective a shift in you know feeling hopeful and thinking you know what this is gonna be a good year because i mean if you don't do that then that's just so miserable if you can't think that the new year holds much better than it did the previous year right so i think that's one of the things I love about being alive, being, um, you know, experiencing a new year because you have hope, okay? And I wish you hope this year. But more than that, I wish you to be focused and get it done. So what are we talking about today? Today's topic is 10 things to do differently to win with money in the year 2023, right? I don't even know this, you know, every year it's 2020 me, 2020 what, what, what is the... the 2023, I think people, I'll, I'll, no, no. So what are we gonna be doing differently this year? I think first things first, but before we do that, Pam, how do you usher in the new year? Uh, firstly, through prayer, uh -huh. then I write my goals down, and, and then, then I Jesus. figure out how to execute those goals. Yeah, simple, mm. simple, yeah. <laughs> and that's the first thing that I wanna talk about, is that this year we are not gonna do I think vision boards are fantastic. I think, you know, doing elaborate things is, is fantastic. Drawing down a plan, having a goal. This year, however, we are going to create systems to reach those goals. So you can write a goal, you can do the vision board, you can do all of those things that you feel you need to do. But at the end of the day, you need to have systems in place. You need to create a routine for your business, for yourself, for your life you need to have systems to know if i get an email i know the turnaround time to answering that email is this long um if i need to invoice between uh meeting with the client and you have to have systems that's actually how you win i think most of the time we focus so much on the goal that's what i want to do but the strategy and what pam was talking about that you write it down is very important um then you say, what is the strategy behind it? How am I going to achieve this goal? I think sometimes most of us have that missing link to, mm -hmm. to say, how am I going to achieve this goal? It's good and well to say, oh, I want to be a millionaire by the end of the year. Fantastic. Everybody wants to be a millionaire. Okay. But the question is, that is the goal. How are you going to achieve that? So something to do differently this year is go beyond the goal. Come up with a strategy. Come up with a plan to say, hey, if I want to make five million this year, how am I going to do that? Then you have to list of list all things. I mean, I did this exercise and I was showing Pam, okay, what do we sell? What are our services? How are we going to provide for that? What is the sales funnel that we're going to do this through? So even higher professionals, guys, even higher professionals who can help you with some of this stuff. I have an accountant, I have a tax person, they're always in my case, please send this, please send that. And sometimes I'll, I'll give my, my, my experience, especially in the beginning when I registered for VAD and I felt like, oh my gosh, it's so much work. It's, you know, constantly in communication with these people and you have to pay a retainer. But having professionals do your work just saves you so much time and heartache in the long run. And those are some of the things that you have to do in the beginning. Invest back in yourself, invest back in your business have systems in place okay so going beyond goals in 2023 then another thing to do differently is budgeting i know yes and i literally i think every time even i talk about budgeting it's like ah but it's such an important tool guys budgeting is such an important tool because it actually you are assigning an assignment to your money you are saying, if I have 10,000, I'm going to assign, I'm going to tell my money where to go. 
And that is such a powerful way of thinking about it. Instead of thinking, oh my gosh, that thing that chose me that I don't have money. And you will just live in that cycle where you hate a budget and yet every time you ask yourself, where did it go? Right? So budgeting is a powerful tool. And I will say even go further, right? Budget in advance. Three, six months. I love doing that. And I was doing that the other day. And I was telling Pam that, ah, oh, you know, it just shows just how much everything requires money, right? Because in my three or six months budget, so it's, it's to, it's a snapshot into the future that in March is my birthday. What do I want to do around my birthday? I know that my budget will not be the same for January, February, March. In Jan, the kids are going to school. It's this, it's that, it's the stationery. Oh no, goodness, this person needs new shoes. So a budget really prompts you into the, it, it prompts you to realize the things that you actually need. Okay, so three to six months, write it down, uh, what you anticipate on spending, and then do the actual spending, like what was the actual uh, amount of money that I spent. Then can we talk about inflation? Oh. Eh, 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 eh. Everything is up. Petrol is up. The interest rates are up. It, it's insane. School what? fees. School fees. <laughs> School fees. School fees, guys. School fees. Right? It is a and just on this as a side note, people who ask people about kids, we are not having that in 2023 because kids are expensive. Okay, some people make these decisions as a financial decision to say, you know what, I cannot afford to have kids, and that is okay. So please, let's stop asking people about their ovaries and their wombs that we living in. It should have been left in 1890, but I mean, anyway. So budget for inflation, things have gone up. You know, if you used to spend two and a half thousand on petrol, now your full tank, my full tank the other time, I was shook up, you know? So budget, have that in mind that I do not think that this year it's going to get any lower. Instead, I think our inflation rate is gonna just get higher and higher, okay? And what does that mean? It means that there will also be a rise in interest rates, okay? So, you know, if you have a bond, you know, if you have a car that um, is financed, you know that if you have anything that is going off your account as a debit order, you know that it has gone up because the interest rates have gone up. If you were paying 20000 for your bond, now you're paying much higher. So you have to take that into consideration. Where are we going? And you have to either tighten your belts um, to say, I know things are going to become even more expensive than they already are. So do I have to tighten my belt or do I have to find extra income? And we're gonna talk about that as well, okay? So budgeting, budgeting for the future, budgeting with inflation and interest rate hikes in mind is very important. Then, another thing we're doing differently in 2023 is that we are not going to get ourselves into unnecessary debt, okay? You are not going to max out your credit card because Pam asked to go to Cape Town with you or you know like this unplanned stuff yes I'm all for being what do you call it spontaneous, spontaneous. that's the word I'm looking for for being spontaneous for living life but if it makes you financially irresponsible we are not doing that this year but on top of that if you do have debt 2023 is the year to actually get very serious about paying off your debt we are not dancing with debt anymore you know a lot of the times people want to dance with debt no no i have a little bit of debt here uh, but i still want to enjoy myself this is the year to focus laser focus and say you know what i don't want to dismiss anymore i don't want to be dancing with debt in my life if you can pay it off pay it off okay if you have some extra funds that come through either through a tax refund through a bonus don't go on my enjoyment and you still have debt guys in 2023 we are not dancing with debt okay actually it's one of my things I'm, i don't have debt right but for some reason i was reading somewhere in the bible and it just became so clear that debt is slavery mm -hmm. and i became super clear about what i want for my future that debt is not going to be part of it so i hope that if you're watching this I know it's not always easy getting out of debt, but it is possible. 
but the first thing that you need to do is commit to stop dancing with debt it's not cute we are uh, doing that differently this year then another thing we are doing this year or we are that we're doing differently is that we are paying attention to our spending habits this one i feel like you know i'm, I'm getting very uncomfortable because I know I haven't been that great, especially last year. You know, I literally took out my bank statements. I put them here. My business statements. I put my personal statements here. It, it, it looked a bit messy, to tell you the truth, right? And I think where I get it wrong is that because I tell myself that I've done the right things. I know I've saved. I've invested. You know, I have my little pockets. I've done that. Then from there, it's anything goes. And yet I realized that there are things that I wanted to do beginning of this year now, pay professionals, get some stuff done. And I was like, I wasted so much money mm. through frivolous spending, through just, you know, not thinking so much about money that I would have had more than enough to pay mm. my professionals and have my systems in place just mm. like that, you know? So I think this year for me is a big one, paying attention to my spending habits. And I don't believe in restraining myself so much that I don't feel like I'm enjoying myself, but I think I could definitely do more, right? And what, is, what does that look like for me? So I have increased to say, okay, I want my net worth to be this much. And I know it's gonna stretch me a little bit. And so having that at the back of my mind, I know will help me. So you have to think about your situation and yourself and say what does that look like what does paying attention look like what is it that i will set down as a goal or as a focus area that will help me remember when i'm trying to spend like i spent i mean you know we'll do lunches with like 2k we'll spend lunch here and there you know and all of those things add up I, there's nothing wrong with that but if you know you're not where you truly want to be in life mm -hmm. and you can make an investment into your future for me that's what i'm focusing on this mm -hmm. year okay so paying attention to our spending habits massive 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 thing i think it's a big thing for me this year then another thing we are doing differently this year we are finally going to build an emergency fund guys i mean how many emergencies have you had <laughs> you and one thing i realized that as you get older you have more responsibilities and more people uh, um, rely on you. I'm the type of person who does have boundaries, but there are some things that definitely come up that you yourself really feel compelled to help out with, mm. right? Not just for other people, but for even for yourself, right? So I think it's very important. And I think this year, I really just want to talk. I know I'm always honest, but like, really go deeper into how money affects us because it affects us deeply and one thing i do not want for myself and for my tribe for anyone i love is to worry about money mm -hmm. because it is not pretty it is not cute worrying about money so an emergency fund is money that you have set aside guys let's be comfortable with having money in the bank account right i know a lot of people when they have money they have to spend it it's like money burns my pocket and i have to spend all of it <laughs> I think let's do a challenge, Pam, to say if you have a thousand rent around the house, just leave it. Okay. Just leave it there. See it, be comfortable with seeing money, be comfortable with touching money and not spending it. Uh -huh. Can we do that? I don't know, a month? I think we will we'll definitely do that and see how it goes. Because yeah. we have this thing where when it, there's money, it needs to be spent right and for me i know i also have that problem so that's why i always say i know when i have money i will I have my automations going off my debit orders going off and i'll even put a little bit extra but whatever is left is you know and i think it's time to really get back to focusing and saying what do i want what does my future look like and what do i have to do now to get to that point okay so build an emergency fund and it can be anything remember again my thing that I always encourage is you don't have to go for the three months or six months. If you've never had an emergency fund before, if 10,000 rand can just sit in your account, that's an accomplishment. If it's 5,000 rand, that's an accomplishment. But have 
some sort of a goal that you're working towards. If it's 2,000 rand that you've never had sitting for anything that can pop up, then I think that should be the goal. And I always say this, that an emergency fund is not just for bad things happening. An emergency fund could be, I'm saving for any opportunity that might come up. How many of us get left behind when opportunities come up because now you don't have an extra 10,000 sitting around, which in actual fact you could have saved, right? So also change the mindset from disaster to it's an opportunity build up. I literally even have, when I have like my little debit order going off on my emergency fund, I don't call it an emergency fund. I call it opportunity build up because it's an opportunity also not to get into debt, right? If you have some money, a cushion, it's giving yourself that opportunity to say, if a, something, even if it's a disaster, I'm not gonna use a credit card, I'm not gonna go over draft, I'm not gonna call Pam here asking for a loan, okay? And we're not doing that this year. People, we are not, people, don't borrow people money this year, no, no. We are sorting ourselves out. Okay, another thing that we're going to do differently is we are going to continue investing even in tough times. What we often do when tough times hit, the first thing we think about, oh, no, 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 I'm just going to let go of this investment. Yes, there are some situations that require you to stop. It could be a really dire situation. But if you cannot continue with the debit order, leave the money there. Let it just to grow you know, continue investing and when you are back on your feet, you can go back to the investment company uh, investment company and say, hey, I want to restart my investment again. And another thing, it kind of makes me think about one thing we're not doing this year is what something we're doing differently this year is that we're not going to bury our heads in the sand. If you are going through financial difficulty, please pick up the phone, call the bank and say, hey, my things are not doing that fantastic how can i work it out so that once i'm back on my feet i can go back to the normal payments but you'd rather do that than just play hide and seek they will find you and they will take away your stuff and your credit score will be terrible so one thing we're doing differently is that we're facing things head on okay and then another thing we're doing differently is that we are not just going to buy stuff for the sake of buying stuff or for the sake of thinking oh i think i can afford a bond at ten thousand you have to calculate the total cost of ownership of this thing and what is going to cost for you to have it yeah the cost of ownership if you're going to buy a house the pool pump broke we're fixing it the ceiling was leaking you had to fix it the gate you know it's a lot of things that go, go into home ownership or owning any type of asset owning a car don't just focus on what will go off your account every month. There are other things that are going to break that you're going to have to fix. Okay, so very important. And another thing we are doing differently this year is that we are going to talk about money with our partners, guys. We're going to talk about the expectations we have for one another and how we are going to handle finances in partnerships. Too many times, people just go into it blindly oh love will heal all of us love will just be the answer love is mostly the answer but real life is real life and it gets real real quickly so you need to be very intentional in your communication with your partner to say okay boom we're moving in together who is going to take care of what what is your expectation of me what is your expectation and um, what is my expectation of you right Having those conversations from the get-go will help avoid fights and a resentfulness, okay? So, actually, Pam was saying I should do a video about that, where I talk about, I take you through the questions um, that can be a conversation starter with your partner. So, that's the next video, all right? Then, I think a very important thing when it comes to money is to ask yourself, what is my why with money? Mm. Because often, yes, you can work towards making more money, but what is your why? What is your why is your why when it comes to money? I work hard, sure, but what is the intention? What is the type of life that I want to build? Mm. Right? Because I mean, I think it goes back and ties very well with pay attention to your spending habits. I've had to go back to my why instead of just oh no, 
times are good it's good you know what is my what what am i trying to build and don't be afraid of sacrificing i think most of the time we are so terrified of downgrading because oh my gosh you know what will it look like nobody cares everybody has their own things a few people might talk about it but they'll get over it very quickly don't be afraid to sacrifice for the things that you truly want for the bigger picture um and if i were to tell anyone who's a graduate moving into the world of work is sacrifice try as many things as possible in the first few years of your career don't try don't move fast into owning a, a property don't move fast into um owning the fleshiest car pace yourself and think long term okay then i don't even know what number i'm on at this point but something we're doing differently is that we actually this year gonna believe that it is possible mm -hmm. right i as i mentioned one of the things i love about being alive and i just love about uh, my personality is that i'm always hopeful i always hope that and I always feel like, you know what, the future is going to be much better. My best days are ahead of me type of thing. Truly believe that it is possible for you. Truly believe that financial freedom, financial security is your portion. And that's what God wants for you. And believe that, believe that about yourself. Because I think once you believe something, it's easier to kind of see that it can happen. But if you don't see that it can happen, without vision, we perish. Right now, appreciate. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Last but not least, of the things we are doing differently to win with money in 2023 is that we are going to start side hustles. We spoke about interest rates being high, inflation being high. Guys, it is not a luxury anymore to have a side hustle. It is a must, okay? And one thing I always see people get very overwhelmed with thinking, what side hustle can I start? Where, where do I be? Start with what you have. Start with what you have. If you are a nurse, we we're talking about it. If you are a nurse, you have so much to offer. I mean, I would pay money to be taught how to do CPR. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. CPR, mm -hmm. yes. yes. <laughs> um, first, first aid mm -hmm. kid, like how to use what? If someone is talking, like such mm -hmm. simple life skills. But where do I begin? Where do I go for something like that? And if you were a nurse, I could say, I'll come to school to a group of moms and teach um, our helpers, teach us how to do that type of stuff. If someone, if you find the baby in the pool, what do you do? What's the first thing to do, you know? So start with what you have. And I want to sort of go back to the Bible and show you that actually God uses what you have already. With Moses, Moses didn't was not a good speaker. He felt very conscious and he thought, oh my goodness, I'm young. And he was like, God, what am I? And he said, what do you have in your hand? God did not go and ask, see, okay, no, go and get. He said, what do you have in your hand, right? And he had, I'm going to call it a stick, but it's not a, a stick. Rod. Yeah, he had a rod mm -hmm. and he used that, okay? Even with David, a young man who was um, herding his father's um, sheep, when he heard what was happening, he said, I will use what I have. He used a slingshot for Goliath, a big thing, right? And I think just always remember that you have something to offer. You are valuable and the world needs what you have, okay? So if it's teaching personal finance, don't think, oh, my body is doing it, Maya is doing it, somebody, hey, there is room enough for your voice. You know, I was talking to Pam and I was encouraging her to also to start a YouTube channel, which we will um uh share on this channel once she has started mm. it which is before the end of this week by the way because this year we are not here we are not talking we actually do it and she was talking about how saturated the beauty because she's a pro hairstylist as you know my hair never misses ever because of her and i said you have a voice you are so variable um and sometimes people just gravitate towards you as a person someone else can talk about the same damn thing but just who you are and the gift that God has put inside of you. That's what we need. We are showing up for ourselves this year, guys. We are not downplaying our gifts. We are not downplaying the greatness that God has put in us. We are going for it. If it's a YouTube channel that you're going to start, start it. If it's 
um, you are a nurse, if you are a teacher and you can speak perfect Sesotho, go start that channel and teach our kids mm. how to speak perfect Sesotho. If you are someone who can read and write very well and you love reading books, start a channel on book reviews and what it is that your perspective matters. If you love wine and you can smell and taste notes that nobody mm. can and you are a black person, we want that perspective. You know, so I will in encouraging you to put yourselves out there for yourself, make yourself proud and just do it. Okay, just do it. This year we are focusing, we are focusing on our habits and we are not here. Thank you so much for watching Tribe and happy, happy new year again. But it can only truly be a very happy new year if you action the things you say you want to achieve this year. And from me and Pam, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe. Remember to like the video so that it does show up on your feed um, way more. And remember to share it so that other people can find this useful information. Cheers for now.